Hi. Welcome to Asian Movie Scenes. Today, I'm going to explain an action, adventure, drama film called Battle Royale. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Due to a major recession, the Japanese totalitarian government passed a program to minimize juvenile delinquency known as the B.R. Act. The act requires the government to randomly select a class of high school students to engage in a battle to the death inside an arena. The last one to survive wins the game. Last year, various people from the media flocked as the army transports a luddied girl, the winner, wearing a high school uniform, who smiles menacingly. A high school student, Shia, recounts how his mother left him and how he found his father hanging in their apartment. One day, his best friend, Nobu, wounds a teacher, Kitano, which leads to him resigning. A year later, Shuya's class is taken on a field trip. On the bus, Megami encourages her best friend, Nariko, to give her homemade cookies to Shuya. Shuya accepts it awkwardly but gives it to Nobu. The bus enters a tunnel. Shuya wakes up and sees his classmates and teacher are all asleep. The bus driver and conduct rest wear gas masks. The conduct rest finds him and knocks him out. Shuya and his class wake up in a dark classroom with metal collars on their necks. The students get up and back away in fear of two unknown students, Kawada and Kiriyama. The class watches as a helicopter lands on the abandoned school with dozens of soldiers waiting. Their previous teacher, Kitano, hops off the helicopter and heads to the classroom. The class is surprised to see their former teacher, who asks them if they are familiar with the BR act. When he doesn't get an answer, Kitano turns to Nobu and uses him and his lack of discipline to explain why the BR act exists. He announces the battle royale, where the class must battle until only one of them survives. Seeing the class in disbelief, Kitano presents the body of their teacher, Mr. Hayes Hida, who pleaded for his class to be released. The students scream in fear, realizing the seriousness of their situation. Kitano plays the video explaining the mechanics of Battle Royale. The host congratulates the class for being chosen for this year's Battle Royale and informs them that they are on a remote island. Kitano spots students whispering and throws a knife, hitting a student on the head. The rest scream and attempt to escape but soldiers fire warning shots to make them back away. Nariko gets hit on the arm, angering Nobu, who jumps on Kitano. But Kitano slices him on the leg while another soldier punches him. Unfazed, Kitano sways the soldiers away and resumes the video. The video explains that the island is divided into zones. Every day, Kitano will announce danger zones where, if the students are in there at a given time, their collars will explode. The collars, which act as a locator and heart monitor, will also explode if they are tampered with. This drives Nobu to the edge, yelling at Kitano. Another student, Motobuchi, tells him to be quiet so they can focus on the video. Nobu fights him until soldiers pull them away. Kitano grabs a remote, and Nobu's collar starts beeping. The students avoid him as Nobu begs for help. Shuya watches as Nobu's collar explodes. Shuya mourns for his friend, picking up the Polaroid that they took at the bus earlier. Red with anger and grief, Shuya rushes to Kitano but is held back by his classmates. The video continues to explain how, if there's more than one survivor after three days, all the collars will detonate, leaving no survivors. The sole winner will be allowed to go home. Another student, Mimura, asks how they were chosen. Kitano answers that it was a random selection. Mimura asks why the government is doing this, Kitano blames the students' disobedience. Soldiers bring in multiple supply bags, each containing food, water, a map, a compass, a flashlight, and a random weapon. One by one, the students are called and given a bag before leaving the building. A heavy boy named Yoshio is called first. One of the girls, Sakura, defiantly throws back the supply bag given to her before leaving. After already leaving the classroom, Kawada comes back, 
pushing Kiriyama before demanding a different bag. When Chuya is called, he gives the Polaroid to Nariko, telling her that he'll wait for her. Chuya leaves the building and hides in a bush to inspect his bag. He's interrupted by Tendo, who has an arrow sticking out of her neck. She collapses as someone from afar continues to fire arrows at her. Chuya looks up and sees Yoshio with a crossbow. Chuya throws his flashlight on his face before running with Nariko. Yoshio tumbles down, losing his crossbow. He fumbles around when Kajashi approaches, holding his crossbow. Yoshio rushes towards him, making Kajashi panic and pull the trigger. Near the island's shore, Chuya and Nariko find a cave to hide. Chuya checks Nariko's injured arm, glad to see that the bullet only grazed her. In their bags, they find a pot lid and binoculars as their weapons. Shuya wonders if their class can escape the island, but Nariko doesn't trust the others anymore, given that they bullied her before the events. When Nariko brings up Nobu, Shuya recalls being in the foster home with him. At the time, Nobu had been ditching school until Nariko wrote to him, asking him to come back and join the school trip. With everything that happened, Nariko regrets inviting Nobu back, but Chuya doesn't blame her. Students corner Kiriyama by the shore, mocking the paper fan he got as a weapon. With him not being a part of the class, the students wonder if Kiriyama is a spy for Kitano. A student aims a gun at his head, allowing Kiriyama to steal the gun and shoot them. In less than a minute, Kiriyama takes down several students. Victorious, he walks over their corpses and takes a gun and two grenades from them. At the edge of a cliff, Sakura throws her bag into the ocean, declaring that she doesn't want to be part of the game. Her boyfriend, Kazuhiko, mourns the hopelessness of their situation. The two hold each other before jumping off the cliff to escape the nightmare. In a storage room, Megami looks through the Polaroids she took of her classmates. Someone enters, and she quickly grabs her stun gun. Mitsuko reveals herself, and Megami allows her to come in, thinking that they can be allies. Mitsuko snoops on Megami's Polaroids before taking her stun gun. She lunges after Megami and tackles her down, holding a sickle to her neck. Mitsuko tells her about two classmates, Yuji and Yoshimi, who hung themselves next door. Mitsuko declares that she refuses to lose like them before slashing Megami's neck. On the following day, Shuya and Nariko listen to Kitano's announcement. When Kitano announces Megami as one of the fallen students, Nariko freezes. Kitano lists the danger zones and their schedules, prompting Shuya and Nariko to take notes on their maps. Nariko is still shaken that her friend is gone, but Shuya pushes her to move, seeing that they're in a danger zone. While running, Oki ambushes them with a hatchet. Shuya throws his bag to his face and allows Nariko to escape. He uses his potlet as a shield, effectively blocking Oki's attacks. Oki jumps for him, causing them to fall down the hill. When Shuya rolls away, he watches Oki struggle with his head wound. Oki had accidentally plunged the hatchet on his own head, bleeding severely before collapsing. Seeing his classmate gone, Shuya panics in guilt and fear. They're interrupted by Motobuchi firing a gun at them. The nervous Motobuchi stammers while holding them at gunpoint, allowing Kawada to shoot him. Kawada takes Motobuchi's gun and asks Shuya and Nariko what weapons they have. When they show the potlet and binoculars, he takes Oki's hatchet. The trio hears two girls asking everyone to a ceasefire. Through her binoculars, Nariko sees Yumiko and Yukiko. Shuya wants to go to them and help, but Kawada stops him, warning him that other dangerous classmates will come after the two girls. Kawada fires a warning shot, making the two girls hide. Shuya yells for the girls to run, but it's too late. The girls are gunned down from behind by Kiriyama, who aims the megaphone at Yumiko's lips before firing at her again, making her screams echo over the distance. Shuya is angry and in disbelief at how his classmates can fight each other. Kawada tells him the only way out of this is to end their own lives. If they can't, then they should run. Later that day, 
Mitsuko heads to a shed to hide but is held at gunpoint by Hirano. Hirano takes her sickle before throwing it back at her, accusing her of executing Megami. Mitsuko begs for her life, letting Hirano kick her down. While Hirano spouts accusations at her, Mitsuko grabs Megami's stun gun from her bag and electrocutes her before stealing the gun. Hirano tries to run, but Mitsuko shoots her on the back. Heading to another safe zone, Nariko collapses due to a fever. Shuya carries her to a nearby clinic but trips a wire, alerting Kawada inside. Kawada helps them, giving Nariko medicine and preparing a meal for them. Sujimura finds his classmates, Mimura, Sito, and Ijima, fixing Mimura's laptop in an abandoned building. Sujimura shows his weapon, a tracking device for the collars, and asks if they've seen Chigasa and Koto Haiki, but they haven't. Mimura tells him that they're looking for a way to escape, but Sujimura is more interested in saving the two girls. Mimura asks him to tell Shuya where they are if Sujimura finds him. When Sujimura leaves, Mimura notices something on the collar. He notifies the others that the collars are bugged. In another part of the island, Chigisa jogs, imagining Sujimura behind her. When she snaps out of it, she takes a break, wondering where her friend is. Niida walks up to her, begging her to stay with him, but she is disgusted by him after he spread rumors about them. Niida threatens to fire his crossbow at her, then confesses his love for her. He insults Sujimura for not making a move on her, and this pisses her off. Afraid, Niida fires his crossbow, slicing her cheek. With widened eyes, she mocks Niida for blaming everyone for his own weaknesses. Without removing her eyes from him, she takes her Swiss knife and challenges him. Frightened by her anger, Niida runs away, and Chigisa gives chase. She slashes at his back and stabs him repeatedly. Before she can take a breath, Mitsuko appears and shoots her. Chigisa quickly runs away but is hit on the stomach. Chigisa collapses on a dam, struggling with her injuries. Sujimura finds her, encouraging her to hang on. She tells him it was Mitsuko who got her, warning him to watch out. Sujimura lets Chigisa rest on his shoulders as she asks about his feelings. Chigisa confirms that Sujimura isn't in love with her but is still happy to die in his arms. Sujimura mourns for his best friend, staying with her after she passes away. Back at the school, Kitano paints a picture of the students before making his announcements. He's disappointed at the slow pace of the killings, adding more danger zones as punishment for the students. That evening, Nariko and Chuya enjoy their meal, thanking Kawada for helping them. Kawada reveals that he is a survivor of a previous battle royale. He and his crush, Keiko, were the last two standing. When their collars start beeping, Keiko shoots him. In reflex, Kawada shoots back in self-defense, mortally wounding her. Before she died, Keiko smiled and thanked him. The officials drugged Kawada and took him to this year's battle royale to shake things up. Realizing this, he vowed to get revenge and to understand Keiko's last words. Kawada claims that he knows how to escape the island but doesn't reveal how just yet. He gives Shuya a gun as a sign of alliance. Gunshots come from outside, and the trio duck for cover. Kawada says it's Kiriyama, who voluntarily signed up for the battle. Kawada tells Shuya to meet him at the shrine in case they have to split up. Outside, Kiriyama is chasing after Oda until they reach the clinic. Kiriyama finally corners Oda and shoots him down. Thinking that Kiriyama is gone, Oda celebrates, revealing his bulletproof vest. Kiriyama appears above him, then uses a sword to take him down. Hearing something from the clinic, Kiriyama throws Oda's severed head against the window with a grenade in his mouth. The trio runs just before the grenade explodes. Kiriyama starts firing inside the clinic, trapping them inside. Kawada keeps a protective arm around Nariko while Shuya is cornered on the other side of the room. Shuya tells Kawada to protect Nariko before jumping out to lead Kiriyama. Sujimura wakes up, hearing gunshots. 
He checks his tracker, locating where the two are heading. Kiriyama corners Shia but runs out of bullets. As Kiriyama loads more bullets, Shia fires at him, but he remains unfazed. Shia jumps into the water to escape. Kiriyama frantically shoots the water, but Sujimura tackles him before following Shia into the water. Back at the building, Sito and Ijima bring the supplies that Mimura requested. While covering the mic on his collar, Mimura reveals his plan to fight against the officials and escape with his friends. On the next day, Shia wakes up in the lighthouse, where Utsumi explains how Sujimura carried him to the lighthouse before leaving. Utsumi assures him that Kawada and Nariko are still alive. The morning report only listed the dead as Oda and best friends Mizuho and Kaori, who seem to have fought each other over a life preserver. The noon report listed Takaguki and Hatagami, who were killed by Mitsuko. Utsumi also gives him Sujimura's message that Mimura is waiting for him. Shuya tells her that Kawada has a way to escape the island. However, Utsumi, who's smitten with him, insists that he stays with them while he heals. In the kitchen, Sakeke, who witnessed Oki and Shuya's fight before, holds a bottle of poison while she thinks of what she saw. Utsumi assures her that Shuya isn't dangerous and that Oki's death was an accident. Despite the other's upbeat mood, Noda reminds them that tomorrow might be their last day. Sakeki offers to serve Shuya's meal but poisons the dish. Another girl, Nakagata, enters and takes the dish from Sakeki. Sakeki backs away as Nakagata eats the poisoned meal. Utsumi tells the girls that Kawada may have a way to escape the island. The news brings them hope until Nakagata starts vomiting blood. Panicked, Noda takes a gun, demanding who poisoned their meal. The girls point fingers at each other, which causes Noda to open fire. With their trust broken, the girls shoot at each other until Sakeki is the only one left. Hearing Shia, Sakeki opens the door for him. She apologizes to him before running away. Shia sees his fallen classmates, distraught and confused at the chaos. He heads up the lighthouse and finds that Sakeki has jumped off. At the shrine, Nariko dreams about having ice cream with Kitano, who's still her teacher. She tells Kawada the dream, who thinks it's scary. But she comments that Kitano seemed lonely instead. In the control room, Kitano is woken up by his daughter's call. His family doesn't know his involvement with the BR Act but doesn't care where he is. His daughter insults him before dropping the call. In the woods, Shia struggles to move with his injuries. He remembers his father and Nobu, which gives him the drive to move forward. When it rains, Nariko heads out, hoping to find Shia. Instead, she finds Mitsuko, who aims a gun at her, mocking her for being protected by two men. But Mitsuko runs away, seeing Kitano in the woods. Shia finally arrives, collapsing in front of Nariko, who goes to help him. Kitano offers his umbrella to Nariko and leaves. At a warehouse, Sujimura finally tracks down Koto Haiki, but she hides from him, not knowing his intentions. In panic, Koto Haiki shoots him when he runs to her until she's out of bullets. In pain, Sujimura warns that she should run as someone may have heard the gunshots. Confused, Koto Haiki goes closer to him, demanding why he still cares after she shot him. With his last breath, he confesses his love for her. Koto Haiki mourns, not having known his affections for her. Suddenly, Mitsuko arrives and shoots her, killing her instantly. Before she could walk away, Kiriyama fires at Mitsuko. Thinking she's dead, he takes her gun and walks away. Mistuko's eyes open, using her stun gun to disable him. She swings her sickle at him, but his bulletproof vest protects him from the slices. He kicks her off before gunning her down. At sunset, Shuya hears that Sujimura is gone. He decides to follow Sujimura's message and go to Mimura. At the building, Mimura hacks the school security system while Sito and Ijima prepare the bombs. Mimura disconnects the officials from the collars and disables the danger zones. 
The soldiers panic as the virus hacks their system. Kitano walks to the fuse box and shuts the power down, ordering the men to restart the system. Mimura and his friends load up the explosives in a truck to take to the school, but Ijima spots someone in the woods. Thinking it's Chia, Sito calls out, but Kiriyama fires at him. Mimura fights back but runs out of bullets. He and Ijima try to flee, but Ijima is gunned down, angering Mimura. With his friends gone, Mimura has nothing left to lose. He climbs up the truck and triggers the explosive just as Shia and the rest arrive. The trio stares at the catastrophe in disbelief, hoping for their friends to come out alive. Instead, Kiriyama walks away from the burning building but doesn't pursue them. Kawada walks up to Kiriyama slowly, readying his gun. Kiriyama hears him, turning to reveal that he's been blinded by the explosion. Kiriyama shoots blindly, hitting Kawada on the shoulder before Kawada fires back, causing him to collapse. Kawada shoots Kiriyama's collar, making it explode. With only the three left, they head to the shore, where Kawada aims his gun at the two. He reveals that he's been pretending to be on their side. Kitano hears Kawada fire his gun, announcing that the battle is over. That afternoon, the soldiers retreat, leaving Kitano alone in the school. Kitano exercises at the school ground, enjoying the peace of being alone. Kawada arrives, revealing that he's unarmed. Kitano brings him inside and confirms that Kawada's collar no longer works. Kitano accuses him of cheating by disabling the collars, pointing a gun at him. Shuya and Noriko enter, holding Kitano at gunpoint. Kitano is not surprised to see them. He reveals his painting of the students' battle, with a smiling Noriko as the sole survivor. The students are horrified at the image, with Kitano revealing that he wanted Noriko, the only student he liked, to win the game from the beginning. He tells Noriko to shoot him, but Chia does it instead, sparing Noriko. Kitano reveals that his gun is a toy before collapsing. Knowing that the game is over, the trio removes their collars. A phone rings nearby, and they're surprised to see Kitano get up and answer his daughter's call. He argues with her before shooting the phone. He takes the last cookie from Noriko's gift, then passes away. The students take a boat to leave the island. Kawada tells the two that he finally understands why Keiko thanked him in the end before passing away. When they reach the city, Shia and Noriko become fugitives for escaping Battle Royale. The two are determined to survive, despite having to run for the rest of their lives. Thanks for watching. Asian Movie Scenes. Over and out.